your ultimate guide to wedding dress shopping tips. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Cara, and I believe that every engaged couple should enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. To learn more about taking the expense and overwhelm out of your wedding plans, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. That's V-A-U-L-T. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, friend, and welcome to today's show all about shopping for your wedding dress. Now, today we're going to focus on preparing to go shopping and then actually going shopping. So if you have already said yes to the dress, if you have already found your dream dress, then you'll want to hang in there. Please hang out with us today by all means, but you'll really want to hang in there for next week's show when we're going to go deep into discussing alterations, including pricing, timing, alternative options, dress transportation and storage, shapewear, accessories, post-wedding preservation ideas, and so much more. Today, we're going to focus on all the things you'll need to know before you go dress shopping and also lots of tips to keep yourself sane throughout the process and make the shopping process less stressful and less overwhelming. Sound good? Today's show on wedding dress shopping is entirely 100% built on questions and conversations from members within the Wedding Planning Podcast Vault. The Vault is a behind the scenes membership group where you get VIP access to Q&A shows, private group discussions, a complete organized library of all episodes ad free just to name a tiny sampling of all the benefits. To learn more and become a member of the Wedding Planning Podcast Vault, simply visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. Based on your questions, your concerns, and your general wonderings, today we're going to talk all about tips for getting inspiration, including a ton of information on plus size and large breasted dress options. We're going to talk about who and what you should take along as you start shopping. We're going to review some online dress shopping tips, when you should buy your dress, And finally, to wrap things up, we're going to go over wedding dress trends for next year, 2020. Whoa, (laughs) so that is quite the itinerary. We should get started. Before you jump in the car and pull into the dress store parking lot, you will want to arm yourself with some inspiration and some general ideas of what you're looking for. I will say that the number one wedding dress overwhelm comes from just having not really a good solid sense of what you're looking for. And when you step into a store that has hundreds, if not thousands of dress styles hanging on rack after rack after rack, I can't think of a better recipe for just being utterly overwhelmed and completely stressed out. So we want to arm ourselves with an idea of what you're looking for. Narrow things down just a little bit. You might very well be absolutely, totally excited to hit the ground running and go shopping for dresses, but not everybody is. There are a lot of us who have a lot of really deep-seated fears about dress shopping. And whether that stems from having a unique body shape or just simply worried about trying to find the perfect dress. I would put myself into this category. I felt really anxious and really nervous about dress shopping. So to have these tips on kind of narrowing your options down before you even step into the store, I think that's the number one way to set yourself up for success here. So the first thing to think about as you're narrowing down your options is what is your dress budget? 
your budget for the wedding dress will largely guide your next steps in terms of whether or not you're going to be shopping a big box retail store for an off the rack style versus a custom made designer dress that's made to your own specific measurements. If your dress budget is $1,000, then please do yourself a favor. Don't waste your time visiting boutiques that specialize in designer made to order dresses. Don't even go there. It's going to be way out of your budget totally non-productive and a complete waste of your time and your mental energy. Sign me up to be the first person in line to knock out any perceived stigma over buying a wedding dress off the rack from a nationwide retailer. I'm not going to name them, but you know who they are. I love the idea also of wearing a second hand dress that you find online or even shopping online for a mock version of a designer style. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in today's show, but just knowing a general ballpark figure for your overall budget will guide your next steps. Very, very generally speaking, you can get an off the rack, absolutely stunning wedding dress for anywhere from just a couple hundred dollars all the way on up to a couple thousand dollars. I know I'm being very, very general here for a custom made to measure dress, designer dress. We're talking thousands of dollars. So three to four to six to ten thousand dollars and upwards. So just to recap, because it's very, very important, if you're looking to spend around the $1,000 mark, then phone it in. You're going to be looking for an off the rack style. And last thing to note here, and I promise we're moving on, your budget should include some wiggle room for alterations. We're going to go into that more later today and then in much more detail in next week's show. So setting that budget, do consider you'll need to set aside some room for alterations. All right, let's continue talking about narrowing down your options. You have a budget now. You know where you should look, where you should go shopping. Next, we're going to kind of start to explore styles and get a general idea of what it is that you're drawn to. Here's a bit from a note from a listener who has already picked out her dress. So this is a nice fast forward and a good perspective from the other side. She has already purchased her dress and she wrote in, I would love to hear your advice on saying yes to the dress. I love so many different styles, fabrics and cuts. I am so happy with my choice. A straight cut fitted buttery crepe gown to show off my curve a very timeless look. But I still keep looking and get dress envy because I could have gone so many different directions with the dress. So making me feel better about that would be nice. That note comes from Melanie and she also has some more questions about styling options for non-traditional looks. We're going to go into that in much more detail next week. I love Melanie's note because it does capture the fact of overwhelm in terms of how many different styles there are out there. How do you even begin to choose what to look for? You can certainly go on Pinterest. You can certainly leaf through magazines. Although, as we'll touch on in a bit, you're going to get like a very prototype looking bride generally speaking, when you browse those avenues, it is helpful to know, are you drawn to a strapless style? Are you drawn to a mermaid gown? Are you drawn to A-line or ball gown styles? Just kind of make a Pinterest board. Put everything down, open Pinterest, and make a board of styles that you are attracted to. Now you can stay flexible. This is not an end all be all of the dress style that you must end up choosing, but to have something in your mind, generally speaking, is really, really helpful. Now, layer number two of that, when you do go to the dress store or the salon, I would really suggest relying on the salesperson who you're you're working with, excuse me, 
and ask them what would flatter my shape, what would flatter my height, what would flatter my body type and see what suggestions they have because you might be completely surprised by a dress that is knockout really flattering on you that you never would have chosen if you were just browsing through pictures or looking online. So keep an open mind as you're browsing and as you're looking and then be willing to be flexible when you actually get to the store and you start trying things on. We have a question specifically on sleeves. Do sleeves on a dress make it more restrictive and difficult to move in? Not sure if any brides have regrets after wearing a dress with sleeves due to discomfort. This is a great jumping off point to say that sleeves and any other style element, whether it be strapless or a cutout back, or a flowing gown style, or a really fitted dress. It all depends on your body type, the style of dress that you feel comfortable in. I cannot stress enough that you have to feel comfortable in the dress you choose. And what's comfortable to me might not be comfortable to you. So be really honest with yourself as you're trying styles on. If you have something on that has little cap sleeves on it or even more of a full sleeve and you're feeling kind of itchy or you're feeling like it's just not very comfortable and you're kind of squirming around and fidgeting with them, that is sign number one that you need to keep looking. If it's bugging you for five minutes in a fitting room, then imagine wearing that thing for 10 hours and potentially sweating and being really hot and being really tired. This is not the direction we want to go. So be comfortable in whatever dress it is you choose and whether that's with respect to sleeves or a cutout back or strapless or any other infinite number of design elements. Just make sure that it feels good on your body. We're going to talk more about this right now as we go into tips for dresses that will accommodate large breast size. Now, this is something that comes up an awful, awful lot because most of us don't look like the models you see on Pinterest and in wedding blogs, magazines, etc. Large bust. What are the best options for women with a large bust to help keep everything secure and in place other than those stickers which don't work? <laughs> for the basis of our conversation on large busted options, I'm going to focus on an article by Jess Edwards and she's a contributor to Cosmopolitan UK. I got this article online and I will link to it in the show notes. I would highly, highly recommend that you go and take a look at this article if you're large breasted and you're looking for options. She has a ton of really good tips and really good information to share. And I'll kind of summarize it here. First, a quote that I love, put your body first and the rest will fall into place. After all, your wedding day should be about how amazing you look in a dress, not how amazing a dress looks on you. Now, large breasted or not, that sums up the entire show just perfectly. First tip for shopping with a larger bust is to wear a good fitting, comfortable, really high quality bra to your shopping trips. Any dress you choose will be a complete failure if it doesn't fit you well. We've already touched on this a couple of times today and we'll do it a couple of more times because it is so critical. If it doesn't fit you well, if it's not comfortable, and if you spend the entire day adjusting things and feeling self-conscious that it doesn't fit, that dress will be a complete failure. Here's another quote from the same Cosmo article. Do not believe that sewn in cups, tit tape, and recommendations from anyone with small boobs will work in place of a great underwired bra. So again, this is written by a woman who has extremely large breasts on top, but not necessarily on the bottom. So she had a lot of challenges in finding a wedding dress that would accommodate her shape. 
If you need to be wearing a full, big underwire bra to keep yourself comfortable and keep yourself in, then consider bra strap carriers, which are tiny loops that are sewn to the undersides of your wedding dress straps. And those will secure your bra straps underneath the dress straps. This is a really simple alteration item and it's totally worth it to keep your straps underneath your dress so that they're not peeking out or sliding down your shoulders. And to summarize this on big chested dresses, um, another quote from the article, if I could give one tip to any, any future bride with big boobs or any kind of body hang up, it'd be this. Find a shop that understands women's bodies, how different they are, and how they should come first, not the dress, and you'll be fine. Try not to feel discouraged if your say yes to the dress moment is nothing like the TV show. Mine wasn't, but everything turned out just fine. And again, that's a very short summary of a wonderful article by Jess Edwards on Cosmopolitan UK's website, and I'll link to it in the show notes. Please go take a read if you'd like more information on that. And now let's turn to plus size dress options. This is another article from Cosmopolitan UK. They had such a wealth of great information and these two articles were by far and away the best two that I found. So I'm not just sharing from the same site out of laziness. These were really the best information. So this one features an interview with Callie Thorpe, who's a size 24 style blogger and model. And in this interview, she guides us through searching for a dress as a plus size woman. And a quote, she points out, quote, anything that is slightly marketed towards weddings doesn't include plus size bodies. Amen. Who can relate to that? It's totally true. And it's a really unfortunate thing in our society. And Callie has a beautiful narration of her journey to finding the perfect dress that fits her so wonderfully. There are a ton of pictures. And spoiler alert, (laughs) she ended up finding her dress at a big box American dress retailer. I would highly encourage you to read this article if you're feeling frustrated by the lack of plus size options on Pinterest, in bridal magazines, and blogs. You'll find a link in today's show notes. If you have any trouble finding those, then shoot me an email or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Happy to point the way. Okay, shifting gears somewhat, let's talk about when you should start dress shopping. So when on the wedding planning timeline does this fit? A uh, listener note, I'm dress shopping eight months before the wedding. Is this enough time? Yes, you're in the clear. You're good. Very generally speaking, anywhere between 12 and six months before your wedding is plenty of time and a great time window to start your shopping. Now, if you're going the custom designer dress route, I would suggest closer to the 12 month mark just to leave yourself plenty of time. That process is going to take much more time than buying an off the rack style. And with respect to timing, I want to give you just a mental preparation tip Be ready, be prepared mentally. You might need multiple trips to find the perfect dress. So pace yourself and be patient. This is not a wedding planning task that you can write off to take place for one hour on a Saturday. It might take multiple trips. It might take a few hours. If you get exhausted, if you get overwhelmed, and if you're completely over it, then call it quits for the day end that trip and schedule another time to go back and pick up your shopping when you're feeling relaxed and refreshed and you've had some time away. You might also need to reconsider who is there with you. We're going to go into that much more in the second half of today's show. And now just a really quick touch on alterations. We have so much more to come on this next week, but I do want to address alterations because it's a really important thing to consider before you shop and as you're trying on dresses and considering which one is going to be the winner. 
Some dresses will naturally require less alteration than others. And this is a really, really important thing to keep top of mind as you're shopping. Now, what those styles are is a really tricky thing for me to generalize because we are all unique shapes and sizes. I can share a personal story. My dress needed zero alterations minus a very, very simple bustle in the back so that we could pin up a very short train. So there was one very, very minor alteration. And the style I chose was strapless with a corset lace up on the back. That is a great way to cut back on alterations because if you need to take it in a little bit, you tie it tighter. If it's too tight, you loosen it up a little bit. That's a really easy way right there. And then the bottom of it was kind of bunched up. I'll share a picture online so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But this style on my body and my body shape needed zero alterations. That saved a ton of money. I was pretty lucky in finding that dress, but I did try on numbers, uh, handfuls of dresses that didn't fit my body well, and they would have required hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of alterations done. So in general, and this applies to off the rack dress shopping, ideally you want to choose a dress that naturally fits you well as is. In most cases, this is not something that you can just eyeball by browsing on Pinterest or looking at pictures. You simply have to get out there and just start trying on styles on your body and seeing how they look and seeing how they fit. I mentioned this briefly earlier. You might be surprised by what styles really, really work on you and which ones simply do not. So, so, so much more to come on alterations on next week's show, but very worthwhile to consider as you're shopping to potentially cut down on the back end cost of a bunch of elaborate uh, alterations, which can add up to a really hefty expense. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to review who and what to take along to your dress shopping appointments online dress shopping tips, and wedding dress trends for 2020. Back in a few. I know, I know. Today's show is all about wedding dresses, but it's also brought to you by our friends at Generation Tux. There are two big problems with suit and tuxedo rental for your wedding day. Number one is that getting motivated to spend your weekend stuck in a formal wear store crawling with annoying salespeople. Ugh, I can literally think of a million things I'd rather be doing on a Saturday. The second problem is that you've got to carve out the time to actually pick those suits up the day before the wedding. Not to mention at that point, pray that everything actually fits. With everything else going on, do you really need all that added stress and pressure just hours before the wedding? Well, breathe a sigh of relief because Generation Tux solves all of it. Here's how it works. Visit generationtux.com where you can build your look online right from the comfort of your couch. The best part is that everything arrives on the doorstep of all the wedding party members 14 days before the wedding. That way, if there are any fit issues at all, you've got plenty of time to take care of it. You'll enjoy free round trip shipping, free swatches to see in person, free home try on, and a free rental for the groom with five paid party members. Save the time, save some money, and most importantly, save your sanity by checking these guys out at www.generationtux.com slash wed planning and use promo code wed planning for 10% off the entire groom's party. Did you know that Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible Originals? Audible Originals are stories created exclusively for audio, including documentaries, exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you can't hear anywhere else. With the convenient Audible app, you can listen anytime, anywhere, and on any device mobile, Alexa-enabled, Bluetooth, and more. 
I love to listen at the gym while I'm shopping and driving around in my car. Anytime I'm on the go, I can listen with Audible. I recently listened to Girl, Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis and Becoming by Michelle Obama. You'll find an endless collection of inspirational audiobooks to lift you up and get you through your day. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash wedding or text wedding to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash W-E-D-D-I-N-G or text W-E-D-D-I-N-G to 500-500. Planning your wedding can be a really stressful time. And if you're feeling like your happiness is suffering, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient and perfect for busy on-the-go schedules. BetterHelp counselors specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, family conflicts, and more. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. BetterHelp is secure, convenient, professional, and best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Wedding Planning Podcast listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code WEDDING. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp.com dot com slash wedding. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash wedding. All right, we're back with a top hit question that is on so many of your minds. And that is who to take along with you dress shopping. We're also going to cover what to take along in this part of our conversation. So bear with me. We'll get to that. How many people should you bring dress shopping with you ideally? A listener says, my mom wants to bring her sister, so bride's aunt slash godmother, and the future mother-in-law also wants to bring her sister, so bride's future aunt. I'm worried too many opinions may make the day stressful. Any tips on navigating this? I know I've dropped this line already in the show, but I have to again because it is so fitting here. I can't imagine a better recipe for being completely stressed out and completely over it than a posse of 10, 12, 15 or more people who are all sitting and staring at you while you self-consciously try to navigate wedding dress shopping. Now, this is somewhat personality dependent because I can think of off the top of my head people I know who would love to have the more the merrier. They are not shy. They are not self-conscious and they would love to have an entire gallery of people there choosing the dress with them and kind of cheering them on as they try on the different styles and such. Now, for others of us, that sounds like your absolute worst nightmare. So I don't have any one size fits all for everybody because everybody is a little bit different. But general guideline on this is to be really, really honest with yourself Think about who you want sitting and staring at you, eyeballs on you, while you try on dresses. Maybe they will even be in the fitting room with you. Do you want your future mother-in-law's sister in the fitting room with you as you're trying on the dresses? Probably not. Do you want her on a chair staring at you for two hours as you go through dresses? Maybe not. Again, this kind of depends on your personality and your threshold for other people's opinions and other people's inputs. 
Again, I can think of a handful of people who come to mind in my life who I would never want to take along dress shopping because they are overly critical or they can't bite their tongue or any other number of reasons. So be careful as you choose the crew that you want to come with you. Now, remember I said earlier in our conversation that you may likely have more than one shopping trip. Some of us might have to go out five different times before you slip on the perfect dress for you. So keep that in mind as well as you're thinking about who to bring along with you. I know people, and my sister-in-law actually did this, she went out shopping by herself. And I think that is a wonderful option if you're already feeling anxious and overwhelmed and stressed out by the thought of wedding dress shopping. You know what? It wouldn't hurt to go out on your own for the first trip and simply narrow down your pool. And let's say you narrow it down to even 10 dresses that you felt comfortable in, that fit you well, that you really liked. And then at that point for the second shopping trip or maybe even the third shopping trip, maybe that's when you can kind of open up the doors and have all of these loved ones come along with you. Now, again, this is different for every person. We all have a very different idea of what that ideal group looks like as we try on dresses for the first time, second time, or even third time. So go with um, your honest feeling of who you want to have sitting there. Now we get to the hard part, which is how do you tell people no? So in this example, let's say you feel absolutely awkward and completely uncomfortable having your future mother-in-law there, let alone any other family members from the groom's side. This is a touchy, delicate, awkward thing to face, saying no. And as with so many other things, wedding planning and navigating relationships and trying to kind of appease people who are going to be your family, I would encourage you to be really straightforward, really honest, and have this conversation with a lot of grace and simply saying something along the lines of, it's not personal. I am feeling really anxious and really nervous and really overwhelmed by the thought of shopping for my dress. And for the first appointment, I would really feel most comfortable. I am only inviting my mom and my sister because the thought of having anybody else there just makes me really, really nervous and really uncomfortable right now. In the future, there may be opportunities for you to come along to a fitting or an alterations meeting or a follow-up shopping trip. You can kind of plug in what applies to your situation right there. But the key being to explain very upfront, very honestly, it's not personal. I'm just really anxious and really uncomfortable with having anybody there except my mom or my sister or my maid of honor or whoever it is for you. So to wrap that point up, How many people you should bring with you is entirely dependent on your comfort level. And please, pretty, pretty, please just be very honest with yourself and very honest with your loved ones about who you want to have there. It's going to do worlds in making you feel comfortable and in taking some of the stress and some of the overwhelm out of your wedding dress shopping experience as a whole. Now, as for what you should bring with you to your dress shopping appointments, a good bra is always helpful. You can bring strapless if that's an option for you. We had a detailed conversation about busts and breasts and bras and boobs earlier in today's show, but go ahead and take along a good bra, strapless if it applies. And who knows, you might not even end up wearing a bra at all with the ultimate dress you choose, but it's good to have the option and good to have something that fits you well, just in case. 
If you know what style of shoes you'd like to wear, bring a pair of those. It does not have to be your actual wedding shoes. You probably haven't picked those out yet. But if you know that you want to wear flats, then bring along a pair of flats. If you know that you want to wear a really high heel, then bring along a pair of high heels just so you can have something on your feet that gives you a general idea of where the dress is going to fall. And we're going to talk about this in much more detail next week, which is accessories. So hair pieces, veils, capes, etc. If you absolutely know that you're definitely going to be wearing your grandma's vintage veil, for example, then definitely have that with you so that you can see what that looks like with the dresses that you're considering. And lastly here, we touched on this in the Wedding Beauty Timeline show that aired back on October 30th of 2019. Dress shopping is a good opportunity if it fits timing wise, if not, no big deal. But if you can sync up your hair and your makeup trial with one of your dress shopping trips, that is an added bonus so that you can see what that dress looks like against your skin as it's made up with the makeup and how it looks with the hairdo that you're considering. Every hairdo might not flatter every dress style. So again, if it works, added bonus. If it doesn't work out to schedule your hair and makeup trials as you're shopping, not a big deal at all. Okay, changing gears. Let's talk about online dress shopping. And here's a listener note that I'll share with you. Hey, Cara, I'm thinking of buying a wedding dress online since there are more affordable options. Any advice on buying dresses online or how to know if the dress is going to be of good quality? Honestly, we could do an entire show devoted to online dress shopping. In general, I'm going to keep this somewhat brief. In general, I would always look for a lot of independent four and five star reviews across social media and across Google. A word when I say independent reviews in quotes, what I mean is you want these reviews to be posted on a site like Facebook or via Google Because if you see reviews on an actual website, I will let you in on a little behind the scenes backdoor secret, their web developer can put whatever they want on that website. So those uh, reviews, excuse me, can be entirely fabricated, completely made up. You cannot fabricate a review that goes on a site like Google unless you're posting it as a fake person, which is another story for another podcast. (laughs) But very generally speaking, look for some four and five stars, some really good, really meaningful reviews across a site like Facebook or Google for the website that you're considering. I would also be 100% sure that there's a phone number with a human being on the other end who you can talk to with any questions you have. Now, if you're looking to have a generic version of a designer dress style made, I would recommend going into a boutique, trying on that specific designer style, just so you can get a baseline idea of the size that you'll actually need to order. If you can't sneak into a boutique to try on a designer dress that's within the range of your size, then the website should have a really detailed sizing chart so that you can submit measurements. Again, pick up the phone and speak to somebody and review your specific measurements and go over which size dress you should order. A note here very quickly, it's easier to alter down than it is to alter up. So in other words, it's much easier to alter a dress that is slightly too big down to fit you than it is to alter a dress that is too small and make it bigger to fit you, if that makes sense. So when in doubt, if you're falling between two sizes, always order up, always order the size up, never down. Now, if there are no reviews, there's no phone number, this website is based in some random island that you've never heard of, or you have any, any, any sketchy feelings at all, keep looking. Do not invest hundreds or even thousands of dollars on anything that gives you a sketchy feeling. 
And then lastly here with online dress shopping, buying a used wedding dress online is a great option as well. So popular sites to look at would be eBay, Craigslist, Facebook has a marketplace that's really robust in some areas. And the same concept that we just covered, you'll want to know the general size range that you'll need, the designer and the style number that you're shopping for, and then expect to invest some money in alterations if you're going to go this route. The chances of you finding your body double who wore the exact dress that you're looking for for their wedding is pretty, pretty slim. So expect that you're going to need some alterations, but this is a wonderful way to wear a designer gown for a fraction of the price that you would pay to have it made brand new. Always, always, always trust your instincts and have a lot of conversation back and forth with the seller. Anyone that you're communicating with should be honest and make you feel comfortable. Beware of settling for a dress that will not naturally fit you well and is going to need a ton of alterations. Do not let your emotions get in your way of dress shopping. Emotional decisions are very, very, very seldomly good decisions. This is a topic that we covered in pretty great detail in a show titled, When Trying to Save Money Backfires, and that aired back on October 2nd of 2019, the dangers of buying a dress that does not fit you in the interest of trying to save a few bucks. It very, very rarely turns out well. And then another great episode with some alternative dress ideas aired on October 16th. And that was a conversation about wearing a non-wedding dress for a wedding dress and things to consider if you want to go that route. Last show I'm going to call out here in online dress shopping is a bridesmaid show that aired back on May 29th of 2019. And we have a pretty detailed conversation about shopping online for bridesmaids dresses, although many of the same principles apply, whether it's bridesmaids dress or a wedding dress that you're shopping for. Whoa, my friend, this has been quite a show. And the last topic to wrap it all up, I'm going to review quickly some wedding dress trends for 2020. And these are spotted on the runway at Bridal Fashion Week, which took place in New York City back in October. Now, I'm going to name a few of these. I'm going to put links to two separate articles in today's show notes. This is obviously an audio podcast. It is very hard to visually get an idea of what I'm talking about sometimes. I completely understand that. So if you want visuals on these wedding dress trends, be sure to check out the show notes and I'll put two articles in where you can see everything that I'm about to list. A quick overview of some trends. Ruffles, which I love. Pants and jumpsuits are coming in as bridal wedding style. So elegant, so sleek, and super comfortable. So I absolutely love the trend of pants and jumpsuits. Another very pretty, very playful, and very feminine trend is floral prints. So adding some color to a traditional white or ivory dress with splashes of floral print, floral colors, floral texture, very pretty. Classic ball gowns are back. If you're into a more traditional style, that's a great option for you. One shoulder necklines. These are very flattering. This can be a great compromise. Also, if you're large chested, having a one shoulder cut can give you the best of both worlds of having a strap for support and also the kind of peak of the shoulder gives the little strapless sexy look as well so that's a great style and then sparkles that's fun adding sparkles into the dress there are some really pretty styles to check out and then lower on the list I'm not going to review everything but puffy sleeves and see-through styles Don't make my personal cut, but it is what it is. And like I said, you can view many, many more 2020 wedding dress trends in those two articles that I'll link to in today's show notes. 
And with that, my friend, we have come to the end. Next week's show is a can't miss. We're going to go over alterations, the cost of alterations, weight loss, timeline for scheduling your fittings, bridal accessories, creative dress preservation ideas, and believe it or not, even more. (laughs) We're going out this year with a bang, and I cannot wait to share that show with you. Vault members, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being in touch with your questions on wedding dresses. If you did not hear your question today, it's coming up next week. Anyone listening who is not yet a vault member, you can learn much more at Wedding Planning Podcast dot co slash vault v-a-u-l-t thank you so much for spending this time here with me today and i will see you again next week same time same place thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the wedding planning podcast for a list of any links and resources called out in today's show take a peek at the show notes in your podcast player whenever you have a hands-free moment You can also subscribe to receive convenient show recaps via email by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co. While you're there, you can browse a library of all past episodes and view special offers from our sponsors. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co. Thank you so much for including me and the Wedding Planning Podcast in your wedding plans. And I'll talk to you again next week, same time, same place.